fixing it. We were the ones who introduced them into the Atlantic through the pet trade. Okay, it's our fault. They came from the South Pacific by humans bringing them and then releasing them into the Atlantic. We have to solve this problem. It's time that we take responsibility for the things that we keep screwing up. And this is a huge problem that we have to fix. My name is Graham Maddox. Um, I'm the owner of Triangle Diving and the president of Ocean Support Foundation. OSF was started uh, August this year. Um, in an effort to support marine projects. Um, the main big project that we were really focusing on, the reason why we started was because of the lionfish invasion in the Atlantic. Um, we became painfully aware that there was a, a lionfish the lionfish coming to Bermuda back in 2000 and then since 2000 to 2012 their numbers have exponentially grown. It's, a, it's becoming a huge problem here. Um, and uh, we just needed to do something. We have to do the science first. This first year is the first year that we're going to get funding and to be able to go out. We have to establish to see what type of counts that we have. We're really afraid that we have way more than we actually think we do. Uh, most scientist papers that we've been reading about, they think that they have such, a, such and such an amount and they end up being four times that amount or ten times or a hundred times more the amount that they actually think. So we're not sure. We have to start by knowing what our enemy is, how many there are. You know, one of the first rules of Sansu is know your enemy. Um, and so that's what we're going to do this summer. We're going to start counts. We have to do, uh, a fish count is about 10% of your total area that you want to do. So at 200 feet, all the way around the island, is about 80 miles around our island. That's why Bermuda has a chance to defend itself against the lionfish. There are one or two other islands about the same size as Bermuda off South America that are doing a pretty good job of keeping them out, you know? And so we probably wouldn't even be attempting this if we were in the Bahamas or Florida because we just don't have a chance. Um, but because of the size of the island, we think we can defend an 80 mile rim. So we have to do 10% of that, which is about eight miles. What we're gonna do is randomly select areas around the island uh, to make up eight miles and we'll do counts. We'll lay out a, a track of line and we'll have a video camera at a 45 degree angle with um, extension tubes coming out that will then give an idea of maybe 15 meters across as you're looking at it through the viewfinder and then we'll run on our scooters that length of distance. Um, then we can go back and analyze that film and say, okay, there's one, two lionfish, three lionfish, four lionfish, and we can do counts that way to get a rough idea of how many there are at 200 feet. Once the science is done, then we have to develop ways of killing them. We know that they gather in hot spots, areas that are um, very suited to them, a reefy area, somewhere they can get their back up into a cliffside um, where there's a large amount of food source, and we're calling those lionfish hot spots. So the idea is as we go all the way around at 80 miles, covering every single square inch at 200 feet, we'll be able to mark these areas what we're calling hot spots. Then we can go back and we can wipe those areas out. Now we have no idea how many hot spots there, there are down there. There may be hundreds of thousands, there may be only thousands, there may be only hundreds. But I think between a combination of spearing and also using lobster traps, and the reason we're using lobster traps is that there's less fish bycatch. Lobster traps are designed to only catch lobsters and have very little fish bycatch. So I think what will end up happening is that we would end up setting traps around the island and also having certain areas that are marked out on GPS that we would go down, send our deep divers down there, and clean them out completely. These lionfish aren't like regular fish. They are they spent millions of years evolving so they don't have to swim fast. Um, they actually seem to the research that's coming out of Florida and the Caribbean, it looks like they don't travel over 100 feet up past where they actually settle and live until the food source is used up, then they'll migrate. So they don't travel very far and we can, we can swim right up to them, only a few feet away from them and jam a spear into them. Um, they, they're, not, um, they're not scared of humans, they're not scared of anything. They sit right out in the open. So one of the advantages of being at 200 feet, there's not a lot of places they can hide. There's probably quite a few lionfish up in the shallows, and we have divers that come back and go, oh, I didn't see any. And they probably were there, you just didn't see them because of the reef coverage is so, so thick here in Bermuda. Um, at 200 feet, there's not that many places they can hide, so they're just right out there in the open. Feet. Once you're down, you have to stay down. So how do you collect 100 fish? You know, and there are hundreds down there. We were using a little blue box that we, was just a flare box and it had a screw on lid and we'd take the lid off and then take the fish and stick it in there, hold the lid down and kind of pull the spear out. It was a little tricky. So um, we kind of came up with the idea of using this, which is a one-way return valve. It's got a very simple flapper in here. 
So as you spear the fish, you push it in there, you can pull the spear out, but the fish still stays in there. We're hoping to fit maybe, you know, 20, 30 fish inside this. Now, we've caught the attention of a group down in Curacao who are making a product very similar to this, uh, but made out of plastic called the Zookeeper. You know, they saw us on Facebook and on our website, and they contacted us and said, hey, look, could you test our product for us at these depths that you're diving to see if they work? And um, so we made a few modifications to theirs. We're putting a cap on it, um, so there is actually a lid on it. Um, and they're sending them up to from Curacao, and we should be able to work with those. But each diver will have two of these. So if we could get, you know, 30 to 40 lionfish in one of these containers, Four then, people. well, then, and two people, so you're close to 100 fish each diver could carry. So if each diver is carrying two of these, then what would happen is it would have a lift bag uh, connected to it, and after it's full, then we would fire that to the surface, the boat would then come along, scoop it up, and then the fish are uh, at the surface, and then we can go ahead and do our deco. We're using closed circuit rebreathers. Um, closed circuit rebreathers are great for deep diving. Um, we can get into the physics of why, but it's a very complicated way to dive, but a very safe way to dive. Um, and so we've been using these closed circuit rebreathers because of the fact that of the depths and the, and the time that we're down. Depth and time and PSI are your biggest enemies in, in, in diving. Uh, the, if you're on open circuit using regular tanks, you have very limited the amount of time that you have down there because um, the amount of air that you're breathing triples because you're at such deep depth. With a closed circuit rebreather, you're recycling that air. So the amount of, you're not actually using any air, you're using a small amount of oxygen. Um, so we're using closed circuit rebreathers. It makes it more expensive. You know, you're, you're buying closed circuit rebreathers for $12,000 a piece. And you're having four divers, so it's a great deal of an investment. Plus the stage tanks, it's a complicated way to dive. But um, we feel it's probably the safest and the, uh, and the best way to accomplish this. Our long range goal is to become a maintenance program. Almost like picking up the trash every day. Works in engineering here in Bermuda, go out every single day, and they pick part of the island and they go, okay, we're going to do these parishes today and we collect all the garbage on those days. And that's exactly what we're going to have to do. We know for the first part of the summer we're going to work this area. The second part of the summer we'll be coming up into this area. By the time fall comes, we'll be working our way around. And we'll work our way around on a continuous basis around the island and we'll have a routine and we'll get it down to where it's just a maintenance process. We're hoping eventually that we, if we do our job well enough, we'll be able to diminish their numbers enough so that we don't have large lionfish. We'll be always fighting the smaller size lionfish. But again, we have no idea. This is all brand new to the Atlantic. We're the, you know, there are very few groups of us like us that are beginning to do stuff like this. And, and any new adventure has to change and evolve as we go. So it's very difficult for me to say, this is absolutely what we're going to do. You know, the great thing about it will evolve and change and we're going to learn a great deal as we go. But the protocols we set up over the next two or three years will be the ones that I think people will be able to carry on using and also evolve and change as we go. The traps themselves, um, we're licensed for lobster traps here. But as we change, as we learn about the lionfish, we'll be able to change those traps. But we have to do it slowly. We can't just invent these wonderful new traps and go off and try them. We've got to take what we have close in the neck for one, see if that works, and do it very carefully and very slowly and deliberately so we can create the data so we can prove our theories and why we should do this and why we shouldn't do something. Mm. It's all got to be very scientific. You've got to have the data.